Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today, we're going to talk about another potential tool to add to your toolbox. This one is another free and open source application, and it is called OpenShot. This is a video editor. If you're a regular this channel, you probably caught back in August, we did the free alternatives to commercial graphics application roundup. Basically, what I did is I went through some of the most common graphics applications out there from things like uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, Flash, Lightroom, 3D, like audio, um, Autodesk's products, Max and Maya, and so on. And we also covered video. Uh, and in that point, the ones I featured in the video itself were DaVinci Resolve and Blender. Then a lot of people suggested to me OpenShot and Caden Live. Well, since doing this roundup, which by the way, I will link down below if you want to check these programs out, I have covered Caden Live. And today we are going to finally cover OpenShot. So what is OpenShot? It is a cross-platform video editor. In terms of cross-platform, well, it's got the big ones. So you've got uh, Linux, you've got Mac, and you've got Windows and you've also got Chrome OS available. It is under the GPL v3 open source license. That is the same one that Blender is under. Uh, downloads for all those various different platforms in binary versions are available. It's got your typical set of video editing features, but we're going to go take a look at these in just a second. And it is also open source. So if you want, you can check it out. It's under the open source repository, open source QT. Also the, uh, the video library and the audio libraries used by it are also available open source. So if you want to check that out, all the relevant links will be in the linked article. If you want to check out uh, Caden Live and the free graphics applications, I will have those linked as well. But now what we are going to focus on is OpenShot. So here you can see OpenShot in action. It is a typical video editor. We'll start from the very beginning. So we're going to do a new project, file, new project. Uh, we can set the profile of it. So come on in here. We'll go choose the profile and you can pick various different resolutions up to, uh, I think, 4K. Yeah, no 8K video profiles as of yet. But to be honest, my biggest beef with this program so far is its performance. I don't think I would want to see it doing 8K video. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we're going to do... Uh, not no, we're not going to do 25i. I want 1920 by 1080 by 30 frames per second. So 1080p, 30 frames per second. All right, there we go. So that is the profile we are working with. Now you're obviously going to need some assets to bring in. By the way, there are you can reorganize the views to however you wish. There are also um, multiple different viewport setups. So we've got an advanced view. Uh, we've got um, simple view, and of course you can close things, drag things in, and, and reconfigure things however you wish. But down here you've got your typical timelines. I'm going to go and minimize this so we don't end up with my start bar hidden for the entire video. And what we're going to start with is bringing some content in. Now this is one area where I've seen OpenShot seems to really shine. I've thrown some different file formats at it, and it's uh, it's done fine with all of them so far. Uh, so uh, let's. Let's do this one right here. Oh, no, I don't want 720, I want 1080. All right, so we'll drop those in. Those are the files we're going to work with. I brought in mob files, MP4 files, MP3 files, various different image files. It's worked fine with everything I've thrown at it so far. Uh, you can have unlimited tracks. If you've never used a video editor before, basically these are layered. So whatever you put in two will be above one. Of course, some tracks could also be things like audio, as we will see in a second. So let's start off by bringing this in. So this is a video clip. This is the basis. This is just stock footage video. Uh, the video itself is kind of chunky. I don't know why that is, but it doesn't really matter for our particular cases. And we're going to drop this back. Now, again, performance is going to be a common thread here. It's by far and away my biggest complaint. Also, I've had a couple of crashes here. Uh, so now we've got this thing in the timeline. What we could do, we could right click it and do various different effects for it. We could have it fade out at the end of the clip if we wished. Uh, so we'll do a fast fade out at the end of the clip. So boom, fade out fast. Uh, you can scrub across the timeline over here. And then now we've got we've got a fade out effect in. So you can see the, the green hash marks of where the fade starts and where the fade ends. So if you need to fade your video, you could do so like that. Uh, if you want to uh, splice together video and so on, it's quite easy. You basically use the scissors right here or you can right click. And I can do things like slice and I can say keep both sides. So we're basically turning this into two videos that we can now do whatever we wish with. Also, by the way, there is undo support, multiple undos. So let's do one more time till we get rid of the slice. And now I think we're dealing with some of that performance. There we go. All right, so there you can see, uh, we got our video up. Now, one thing that's very common that you're gonna wanna do when you're working with video, for example, is add a watermark in place. So let's do that. Add a watermark into our scene. We're not gonna want it for the entire video. We'll want it for parts of the video. All right, so let's drop that watermark in here. And let's put it right now. You notice it's it's snapping past. I'm gonna turn snapping off for a minute. 
And then now we can position things nicely. We can turn snapping back on. So then I change the duration of this clip. It will snap to the end. So you can toggle snapping right there. Sometimes it's very annoying. Sometimes it's not. Uh, you can zoom in and out of this timeline here by holding down um, control and scrolling middle mouse button. Uh, you can also control what is visible by using this little guy right here on your timeline. I didn't know why that didn't snap. All right, so here we go. So now we've got our watermark in place. You may notice our watermark is, uh, what's the word for that? Uh, it, it's big. Uh, the way you can edit that down, anything, just basically click on it and bring up the properties windows and you can edit the properties this way. Now I'm doing it this way because for some reason, manual scaling is really slow sometimes. Again, common theme. So you can do it that way or you could do it right here. Now, another thing you can do with this, and this is a nice thing about this program, is you can keyframe just about everything. So maybe we want our watermark to start there. So here we are on the timeline at the one second part. And what I'm just going to do is take the position, uh, location X, and sort of keyframe, location Y, and sort of keyframe. And this, we're gonna use something called keyframed animations. Basically over time, we'll have the computer interpolate between two values. Again, the scrubbing, I'm, I'm, it's problematic, I guess we'll go with it. So I'm gonna move to about, let's say here, by the way, I'm, I'm just waiting for it to update. So this, this is really irritating. I don't know why I can't smoothly scrub across, uh, but now what I'm going to do is take this guy, I will move this down to the bottom corner, like so, and then I'm just gonna right click, and I'm gonna keyframe that again, and then I right click, and I'll keyframe that again. So now we can see, go back to the beginning, Press play, so we're gonna see it shows up at the mark, and then it will interpol interpolate it, and it's just a chug it. So that's not the source video, that is actually OpenShot that's having those performance issues. Now, I don't know if OpenShot performs better on other platforms, but on Windows, it can be it can be a tad on a chunky side. All right, so there we go. We got some movie in place, which by the way, if we wanna change the speed of the movie, we could have done so right here, so we could have done, uh, or we could do a fade out at the end of it. So let's do that. We'll do a fade, end of clip, and we do a fade out fast. And you can see a couple hash marks here. And now when it gets to the end of the video, we'll do a fade out. So you can easily add effects like that. Now, speaking of effects, you can add quite a few effects to things as well. So you see here, we have a number of different effects in place. Some for audio, uh, like noise removal and so on. We could crop a video here, basically to bring an effect into place. So let's add some, I don't know, we'll add some bars to our to our video here. So we're gonna, we're gonna black bar this guy. So basically video selected, basically go to bars, and then just drag it on. And you get a little icon of the newly added effect. You can click it, and then you can see the details right there. So you can set the bar size, for example, make bigger bars. By the way, everything is keyframable here as well. So you could change the bar size over time if you so wish. So now we got a little bit more of a cinematic effect going on. Uh, you've also got transitions in place. So for example, uh, if we wanted to have um, an intro to this guy, we could then have the intro and then transition out. And I'm gonna show you that as well, because that's actually a pretty good thing to show now too. So we got our project files going on here, but another thing we can do is actually title files. So we can do a title, and these are basically uh, SVG, SVG templates, so things like film rays, we can get back to that in just a second. Or if you have Blender installed, you can actually use animated Blender effects and then you can send values in and this will actually pass this out and render all of the frames in blend. I don't actually want it to do so immediately, but you can have it create uh, 3D effects for you. I don't know how you go about actually adding new templates though, but these are actually rendered in Blender. And so the properties you pass in, uh, you know, so example, my title is this super epic movie, like so it will pass super epic movie in instead of my title, then it'll render that over in Blender. Uh, unfortunately, you're stuck with the Blender fonts, which is a little irritating, but so you do have that integration into Blender for title frames, or you could do your own SVG one. So I'm gonna go back and do an SVG one. We'll do a traditional uh, MPG rating. Various different lines can be put in here. I'm gonna go with the default. Okay, so we'll save that. And now that just shows up as just another asset here. So what I could do is go ahead, we could do Control A, we'll select everything like that, and then I'll just take that and we will drop that in Actually, I'll drop that into track three for now. Resize it down a lot. Put that down into track one. And boom. So now what we're going to have is our clip, our SVG shows up first. And then we get to the, uh, the video clip there. Uh, now, if you want to do some transition effects, you can do so. Basically, transitions. You can do it just down to the common ones. Or the uncommon ones are available here as well. So these are uh, kind of like transitions between the two areas, alpha effects that will be applied. So let's do circle in out. We'll put that as an overlap there and scroll it there. 
So this will fade out. So there you're seeing the effect. So our uh, entry level logo there comes in, fades out. Our movie begins, our watermark, our watermark keyframes goes down to the corner like so. So we've seen kind of the, the gist of what you would do pretty much every single time that you would work with a movie. Now, the one thing we're missing that every movie or uh, effect or something needs to have is probably some audio. Audio, it's just another track. So here we got, for example, this is some... Again, stock music I've brought in. Now you're going to notice the music is a fair bit longer than the rest of our stuff. But again, just drag it to match. All right, there we go. So there is our produced masterpiece with um, our trailer in place and some soundtracks going on. By the way, for the, the soundtracks, there are special effects we can put in. So if we wanted to give it, uh, we could put it through a compressor or an expander here. Let's, let's put it through an expander. Literally, just drag it, drop it in. Again, you can click it to bring it up here. And all of these values, everything you see here, is, again, over time keyframable. So you can, if you wanted to bring the value up a little bit over time, you can do so with keyframes. And now here is our final movie masterpiece. Ah, there you go. So there's the kind of thing that you could do with this. Once you're happy with your end results, come on up here, click export, uh, pick where you want it to go. Uh, obviously, give it a file name other than copy text, untitled project. Uh, you can pick the format you're making it for. So say you're publishing this for YouTube, come up here, target YouTube HD, 30 frames per second. Can you do 60? No, no 60 option. All right, 30 frames per second. Uh, and then high quality, medium, low quality, whatever, and then you can export said video out. I'm not going to export it, and I also don't find, and again, back to the topic of speed, I don't find the speed to be brilliant. Now, what I do find a lot of times, though, with these kind of projects is they almost always, these cross-platform projects, they almost always are developed primarily on Linux and work better on Linux. So if you're a Linux user and you've tried this guy out, let me know how the performance was for you, because uh, in my case, it's been... Uh, underwhelming, I guess is how I would say it. So, but if you're looking for a completely free video editor, this is definitely a good choice. It's been around since like 2008. Now there are some things that I've run into. Again, I've run into some crashes. Another thing that's gonna showcase both a strength and a weakness of this is let's add in another effect. A very common thing to do in the world of video editing, and that is chroma keyed effects. So what we've got here is we've got a video of an explosion, like so. Now, oh, oh, boom. All right, we'll conclude there. Uh, we just crashed. So there again, uh, OpenShot is not a flawless recommendation. Uh, I would actually, from my experiences, and again, I have a feeling this probably runs a whole lot better on Windows, but it, it, sorry, on Linux. But if you're running on Windows, uh, I, I would have to recommend either DaVinci Resolve uh, or uh, Caden Live if you want a free option, or I suppose Blender. I find Blender a little hard to use, to be honest. Uh, but, uh, or I personally, I use Camtasia, and this isn't going to pry me away from Camtasia anytime soon. I also like HitFilm, HitFilm Express. There's a lot of great video editing options out there. OpenShot, uh, again, I, I got a feeling Linux world, definitely better. But as you saw, there are some stability issues, and that that is unfortunate. I was also going to show you, uh, you could do chroma keying, which is you, where you replace the background, that green effect. Uh, you can take all of that out, but even in this case, I still find I get like a shimmer of green. So even those effects aren't flawless, but I think we showed uh, pretty much enough to get you up and starting with it. It's easy to cut video, slice video, transition video, uh, add title effects. You've got integration into Blender, uh, SVG. So actually you can integrate into Inkscape for editing SVG scenes as well. So that's about it. Open shot. Yeah. Let me know, especially Linux users or Mac users. If you're using OpenShot, how do you find it? Is the performance better for you? And is it more stable? Because again, on Windows, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed. But uh, I like to showcase just about everything. This one is a free open source tool, so I definitely am highlighting it. But there are definitely, as you may have seen, some issues with it as well. So OpenShot, have you tried it? Have you used it? What do you think? Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.